Hey everybody, happy Monday. So there's just a big Infinity War Avengers 4 expose that dropped where pretty much everybody in the Marvel Universe did this big interview with a cover shoot for Vanity Fair. So obviously they're hyping everything up, but within their interview they talked a lot about what's happening with the culmination of their big Phase 3 arc in Avengers 4 and how everything's going to look so different afterwards in the Marvel Cosmic Universe. Separately from that, you also probably noticed that the Russos just quietly dropped this picture of a 3, denoting that there would probably be a trailer for Infinity War coming in either 3 days or on December 3rd. We'll talk about that too, but I already did that video for the leaked footage, so I'll add a link for that at the end of this. Most of that will be in the Infinity War trailer when they drop it. But if you are finding me for the first time, there's a bunch of Marvel stuff happening through the rest of the year, so be sure to subscribe to get everything. And I'm still doing that movie ticket giveaway, I'll explain at the end of the video. But talking about all the Avengers 4 Infinity War stuff Kevin Feige was teasing, you may have seen the video I posted from behind the scenes of this big Avengers shoot where Mark Ruffalo accidentally teased Groot Hulk team up stuff. Obviously we knew that that would happen eventually because the Guardians are crossing over with the Avengers in these next two movies. Hi everybody, we're at the um, MCU photo shoot. There's Vin D back there. <laughs> There's a day that's gonna come where you're gonna see Groot and Hulk. <laughs> what are you doing, Ruffy? What the fuck are you doing? What do you mean? Hey, Am I in trouble? <laughs> what is it? This is supposed to be a secret. You're not supposed to do this. I'm not? Oh shit, I'm not supposed to do that. Barry, am I in trouble? Oh no! It was Vince, I Love you guys, see ya. But now we know a little bit more about what was going on. They were doing this huge interview to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Marvel Studios, which is going to coincide with the theatrical release of Infinity War. So in addition to doing Infinity War stuff, they're also sort of capstoning all the stuff that's come before. And what we've come to know is the Marvel Cinematic Universe is now sort of transitioning to become the Marvel Cosmic Universe, which I don't think is going to replace all of the Marvel stuff. But based on what Kevin Feige has been saying is, is most of their development energy is going to be going into these cosmic movies that James Gunn has started to work on now that he's in the process of making Guardians 3. And they did confirm that Guardians 3 is sort of the tip off for this broader Marvel cosmic universe. So when you think of Marvel Cinematic Universe, Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3, Think of the cosmic universe as the exact same thing, just a series of phases, although I'm sure it'll be just a little bit different. Like they don't want things to be as cookie cutter as they have been before, but there's still going to be a schedule. There'll still be movies that get sequels. We might even get a fourth Thor movie based on the fact that the director wants to come back. Chris Hemsworth wants to come back. So it's not like they're completely abandoning all the Earth-based films. And even though Spider-Man is going to go into outer space, obviously the Spider-Man sequel is probably going to be set on Earth. So it's not like all of a sudden all the characters in the movies are just going to go into outer space and it's going to be Marvel Cosmic stuff from here on out. But in conjunction with this, they also detailed a very candid history of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We've talked about it at various points. Like when we got ready for Civil War, there was a lot of drama with the deal they tried to make for the Spider-Man character, how Marvel Studios broke from Marvel proper and sort of separated from Marvel TV and went off by itself. The backstory on it all is fascinating. Even James Gunn talks about some of the problems he had with Marvel while he was making Guardians of the Galaxy. So they used a couple different terms to denote the different eras of Marvel Studios. There's sort of the inception, the beginning, when Avi Arad was still there, when they sort of started to make their own films, when the first Iron Man film, Incredible Hulk, started to be made. And then in success, the early Feige years, when Avi Arad was like, all right, I'm done, I don't want to deal with all this bureaucracy, I just want to make movies and that's it. So he anointed Kevin Feige, he became president of Marvel Studios, and they proceeded with phase one under sort of like the CEO of Marvel proper, Ike Perlmutter. So you may have heard sort of the behind the scenes drama of what that era was like. It was like a very business penny pinching era where they're like, okay, we're all about making money. We need to make the broadest appealing films possible. Sand off all the interesting edges. Just make us the movies that will make us the most amount of money. So naturally there were a lot of clashes behind the scenes. You hear about all the creative fights they used to have. This is when James Gunn also said he had some issues with Marvel's creative committee, which is when they were still advising on the films. So there was a group of people, there was Bendis, Joe Quesada, 
a bunch of other Marvel comic book writers and industry people who would try to do the same thing that Lucasfilm's story group does for the people that make Star Wars movies. Just sort of like handle the continuity, make sure that they weren't going too off book with the characters. One of the funny notes that James Gunn said he got really upset by was when they said that he needed to get rid of the 70s music in Guardians of the Galaxy. So you have to imagine this group of creative comic book people telling him, no, don't do not do that. And that wound up being one of the biggest things about the movie that people liked. The album that they published of those collected songs from the first mixtape went platinum super fast. So very clearly early on, there were a couple different camps within Marvel and Marvel Studios. You had the people that had like a really good idea for building a cinematic universe. Then you had people that were sort of in charge of all the business decisions, and they just fought with each other a lot while they were making these movies. But then they get bought out by Disney, and you finally have someone with the authority to overrule the people that typically overrule Kevin Feige on decisions, and they get to go off on their own and do their own thing. So if you ever wondered why there's not a Black Widow movie, that was a business decision because the Marvel CEO told Kevin Feige that female superheroes don't sell toys. Kevin Feige says that he actually wanted to introduce Captain Marvel before Wonder Woman made it to the screen. And then when Wonder Woman did Gangbusters, they pointed, they're like, see, you can make a female-led superhero movie that people will love, will make a ton of money, it can actually be a good story. So it was just sort of the proof in the pudding. So now that Marvel's off on its own, it can pretty much do whatever it wants. Which is where you get to Marvel Cosmic Universe beyond the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What does that actually mean for Avengers 4? Kevin Feige says there's going to be a finale, meaning that they'll actually will transition out of some of the superheroes. Like we might actually see Captain America die and Chris Evans won't come back. There are a lot of you that are pointing at this Thor spread and you're like, hey, wait a minute. How come he just has the scar over his one eye here? So we'll say careful for spoilers for Thor Ragnarok if you haven't seen that movie yet. I feel like it's been long enough that people who care about spoilers have probably seen it. But there were even people on my Infinity War video that I posted yesterday who were like, how come you didn't say spoilers for Thor Ragnarok? But Thor, he's standing there with a big scar over his eye. He has Mjolnir, which is whole. The reason why you're seeing him like this is because they don't want to completely give away the end of that movie. Because there are always a lot of people that just wait for the DVD release or people in other countries that don't have access to the movies. But there are a lot of people that have wondered about what they'll do with his one eye. Like, will he go full Odin through both of the next Avengers films? Or will Doctor Strange use his skills as a surgeon as well as the time gem to give him his eye back? Or will someone else just simply heal him up so that's why the scar is there? They could always do that if they don't want to do the pirate version of Thor. Even though, you know, I think he could look pretty badass with one eye. But like earlier this summer, we had the Comic-Con Infinity War footage. I did a video for that, and in that footage, he didn't look any different than he looked at the beginning of Thor Ragnarok. He had both of his eyes. People were like, what's going on? How come it's like this here? And how come he's so different at the end of Thor Ragnarok? The thing about that is, is that a lot of his eye in Thor Ragnarok, a lot of the effects for him losing it are done in post-production. So it's almost like a Photoshop filter. So when they did that Infinity War Comic-Con footage, they didn't want to spoil Thor Ragnarok because the movie hadn't been released yet. Getting to the Russos trolling everybody with that three, what that could mean is, is it could mean the Infinity War trailer is dropping in three days. It could be on December 3rd, which is actually a Sunday. So we'll know pretty quickly, but whenever that happens, I'll totally do a video for it. If there are any Infinity War or Avengers videos that you guys want me to do between now and then, just let me know in the comments. The real big thing that's happening tonight is is that the DC TV crossover is happening. It's basically a four-hour movie, so it's two hours tonight and two hours tomorrow. So obviously I'll be doing videos for that. But there is a new round of the IMAX ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. Congratulations to the winner from my last Infinity War video, Byron James. Please private message me so I can get your contact details. I'll just announce a new winner when I post new Marvel. You can click here for my breakdown of the leaked trailer from yesterday, and you can click here to get ready for that big DC TV crossover tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.